Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 24th of April for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to share with you some standout features of this week, but please stay with me because I then will explore in much greater detail each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me once more. If you're new here, it's great to have your company. I'd be honoured if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Also, if you would like to get your free daily horoscope fired to your device each morning, I think I'm pretty unique amongst the YouTube astrologers for offering this service and I've written them for 28 years. Please see the link below. So this week begins with the Sun aligning with the North Node. The North Node is going to make way on the 13th of July into the sign of Aries, very much to do with initiation. But Taurus, uh, for near to two years now, is very much about our values. And because the North Node is our collective understanding or appreciation of values, self-worth, but also money, it's no surprise that when the North Node aligned with Uranus last year, and of course we had that total lunar eclipse on the 8th of November, which was squared up, uh, or T-squared, uh, from Saturn to the position of the Sun and Mercury as it was, but also the Moon and Uranus, we really had a, fa a fantastical amount of adjustment to go through during that period. And that's not been easy. There's been a big uh, increase in costs uh, of everyday foodstuffs, which is very much to do with Taurus energy and also obviously to do with interest rates. So for a lot of people, the cost of renting, mortgages and food and other commodities such as fuel have skyrocketed and it's been really challenging. But I think that alliance between the Sun and the North Node is really asking us how we can gain from uh, really trying to understand this situation. And also because Mercury is retrograde, we can think of Mercury retrograde as purely something that's going to create snags and difficulties, or it's an opportunity to drill down into the detail, Mercury's rulership of Virgo, or to have a conversation or a rethink, Mercury's influence through Gemini, to try to find a way to squeeze a bit more out of our budget, particularly because uh, there is a great link between uh, Mercury and Mars in the first three days of this week. And Mars is in the part of our situations that's to do with our home, but also our family and domestic setup. So there could be an opportunity there. Also, Mars is in a fabulous alliance with Uranus all this week, also in Taurus. And of course, the Sun in uh, Taurus not only links with the North Node in Taurus on Monday, it comes into an exact sextile with Saturn on Tuesday. I feel what Saturn in Pisces is saying is, what is our uh, accumulative experience that we've gained in life so far? Maybe there are some emotional insights and strengths and uh, robust uh, ability to deal with pressures that maybe we need to reacquaint ourselves with. This is especially so if you haven't had to worry about money on an everyday basis until the last six months or so, because I think this has affected so many of us. But if uh, having little money has been something that you've experienced a lot in your life, I feel that what we can gain is certainly through our relationships, because the sign of Taurus is very much about our self-worth and our values. So even if the material world is limited, what we can gain is through conversation. So even though Mercury retrograde has got such a challenging reputation, I still feel that we can turn it to our advantage. However, on Thursday, there is a quarter moon in the glamorous sign of Leo. And Leo can be to do with uh, chance and uh, speculation. And because obviously Taurus can be about everyday money, 
if there is something that you're tempted towards, you know, if someone explains to you there's some kind of get rich quick scheme, I would be very skeptical. But also someone could look for our assistance and it may be someone we've helped in the past, but we may feel that this has become too much of a pattern and we want to push back so that they realize that and appreciate that help in the past and not just take it for granted. So that can very much be to do with loved ones who might need to be reminded that about the bank of mum and dad is not currently open. Or it could be that we need to deny ourselves something that we could have a frivolous desire to have, consume, but actually will it have any benefit to us? Because Taurus is very much about tangible benefits. So if there is something that you're thinking of buying, on a, on a whim from Thursday over the following week, probably best to try to avoid that purchase unless it has some kind of tangible benefit. So this is a week when we are all going to be thinking about our self-worth, our values, and our everyday money, but it's all leading up to the lunar eclipse, which is going to be occurring in Scorpio across the 5th and 6th of May, which is actually going to provide opportunities to turn things round. It's not going to be a panacea. I still think the big reset we're going through is one that's really pushing us to become much more conscious of the use of resources. That's a collective thing, but obviously that's no joke if you're really struggling to eat or heat on an everyday basis. Please stay with me whilst I explore each of those 12 signs. But if you would like to ascend above zodiac astrology and really uh, understand how uh, more serious astrology can work to your advantage in your everyday life, if you do give me three pieces of your personal birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I can provide for you your life roadmap report, but also in my special package of 30% off your 12 month forecast, which can give you Syrian insights. Don't know your time? I've developed a new package based on the sun, my solar package, same offer, 30% off, and you get your forecast too. And if you really enjoy uh, watching YouTube videos based on your sun, these will really relate to that very well. The more serious approach to astrology is more based on your ascendant. So if you're really into that, go for the first package with the three pieces of information. So Gemini, your week commencing the 24th of April forecast does of course see your ruler uh, rewinding. But in the 12th house, that can be quite challenging. The 12th house can be to do with the more psychological uh, domain. And of course, Uranus has been shaking this up ever since March 2019, full time. And Mercury, because it's about communication and it's your great gift, in the 12th house, it can see us become more inward, hypersensitive, uh, perhaps even hypervigilant, which could be a good thing in some ways but it can also see us separating ourselves from others, thinking that they want to be separate from us. But actually, it could just be that they're busy or they see something slightly different to you. It doesn't mean to say there's any particular uh, animosity or uh, difficulty. It's just one of those things. But Mercury 12th house energy can really be quite complex and... Uh, can lead to a period where we're really questioning everything about our situation. But what I'd like to say is that Mars in your second solar house and Saturn in your 10th solar house are offering you real opportunities uh, for progress in a more material way. And even if the conjunction between the Sun and the North Node on Monday does work through your situation by providing an opportunity for greater self-awareness, personal understanding, perhaps some forgiveness around some of the things you do feel more vulnerable or frail around. It's okay, we all have parts of ourselves or our lives which are not necessarily shining brightly. They are areas that we struggle with because that is the human journey. That's the experience. We can feel loneliness. We can feel detachment. We can feel abandonment. 
very, very tough emotions to deal with. So if some of those things come up this week, when you get to the quarter moon of Thursday, just be aware that you could feel that people are talking or there's some gossip doing the rounds and anything around social media could feel very, very raw. So I think this is a week to really cocoon yourself in a way reassure yourself about the compassionate side of your nature if you're someone who helps people who are less fortunate don't forget who you've helped in the past even if it's not possible to help someone in the present but also know that with venus in your sign in an absolutely spellbinding semi-sextile to mars i feel that your originality your creativity but also your allure can draw people to you, but just be aware that you may feel a little bit in a, 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 a pause phase, but it's not just because of Mercury retrograde, it is because of the collection of energy in house 12, which can see us uh, very conscious of how people view us. It's very much about the shadow side of our situations, it can be to do with our anxieties and concerns. But just cosset yourself. You know, if you can uh, give yourself some you time, even a duvet day. If you can afford it, go to a, for a spa day. That would be very, very healing for you. Or any other kind of, of treatment, alternative treatment like that, would just bolster you at a time when you just need to celebrate all the big picture of your situation, but not feel that other people in any... Uh, uh, malign way of trying to isolate you because even if one or two people might be like that there's going to be lots of other people that really appreciate the sparkle that you bring to their lives on an everyday basis it's been a real pleasure being with you please do like comment or subscribe